Hello, welcome to this week's learning. So um, there are three videos that I'm setting you this week and we are going to be covering um, across the three videos fluid mechanics and projectile motion. Um, so this is our final, final bit of learning that we need to know in year 12, which is brilliant. We're nearly at the end of the unit. So over the next three videos, we're going to look at factors that affect air resistance and drag. We're going to look at factors that affect horizontal distance travelled by a projectile. Um, we'll look at free body diagrams and the resolution of forces acting on a projectile in flight. We'll look at parabolic and non-parabolic flight paths, lift force, angle of attack and the Bernoulli principle. And finally, we will look at spin and the Magnus effect. Now, in this video, we are going to be focus on, focusing on factors that affect air resistance and drag. So let's get started. So, when we think of fluid mechanics, what we are referring to is the study of forces acting on a body travelling through the air or water. So, it is important for all athletes in all sports. Air resistance acts on a body travelling at high velocity through the air. So, for example, a cyclist or a sprinter, a skier or projectile, so discus, um, shuttlecock, javelin. Um, air resistance will act on those. Whereas drag acts on a body travelling through the water, for example, a swimmer or a boat. They both oppose the direction of motion of the body and in order to maximise performance and technique, they both must be minimised. So reducing air resistance and drag. There is a video that you can watch, it's not compulsory, but you can have a watch if you would like. Um, a lot of money is spent and a lot of research is done every single year to try and um, look into how to reduce air resistance and drag in sport. Um, you know, you, you don't want to waste energy while performing just overcoming the air resistance and the drag. You, you need all of your energy to go into your forward motion. You don't want to have to compensate for these two things. Um, and therefore, you know, looking back to your technology in sport, um, wind tunnels and fluid dynamic programs will analyse the effects of each and they aim to be able to create for every sport the best equipment, clothing and coaching techniques to minimise air resistance and drag. Now the UK has developed um, the, a leading reputation particularly in Formula One and track cycling um, mechanics. They've done a lot of work in minimising these, especially in track cycling where, where Great Britain have made a lot of progress very quickly and other um, countries in the world are actually trying to meet the, the progress that the GB team are making. And it is down to considering this. So we need to look at the magnitude of air resistance and drag. So there are four main factors that will affect it. Pause the video, have a couple of minutes, try and think what you think those four main factors might be. Okay, so the first one is the velocity. Second one is frontal cross-sectional area. Third one is streamlining and shape. And the fourth one is the surface characteristics. So if we take velocity first, the greater the velocity, the greater the air resistance or the drag. We know that. However, in sport, we're not going to compromise. A high velocity is, is normally essential, especially if you're looking at downhill skiing or cycling or running. We need that high velocity. So velocity cannot be reduced. We cannot reduce your air resistance and drag by reducing your velocity. Cannot be done. Therefore, we have to look at the other three factors. So front cross-sectional area, so the larger the front frontal cross-sectional area, the larger the air resistance or drag, okay, because it, 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 you've got to think of it as a wall, and if the air hits the wall, it's going to cause resistance. So track cycling and skiing in particular are largely affected because you've got the, the front cross-section of the body facing the oncoming air. And there's a lot of effort that goes into reducing this. For example, in cycling, you have the, the shape of the handlebars forces the cyclist to, to reduce the frontal area. Again, in downhill skiing, um, you will see they will tuck into a crouched position when performing. This links in with the second factor, streamlining and shape. So the more streamlined or aerodynamic the body in motion, the lower the air resistance or the drag. So streamlining 
is, is the creation of a smooth airflow or a smooth water flow around an aerodynamic shape. So for example, you can see the swimmer there, um, where the hands are together, that will force the water to smoothly flow around the outside of his body. So the more aerodynamic the shape, the better. And many sports will use a teardrop shape or an aerofoil shape. Um, so that is a shape which has a curved upper surface and a flat lower surface. Um, because that's a really aerodynamic shape. And the final factor is surface characteristics. So the smoother the surface, the lower the air resistance or drag. So there are engineered clothing that is worn across many sports, for example swimming, cycling and sprinting, speed skating, skiing, which create the smoothest possible surface to reduce friction between the fluid and the body surface. Now downhill skiing, so let's, let's look specifically at a couple of sporting examples. So in downhill skiing, elite males will achieve velocities above 40 metres per second, so that's equivalent of 90 miles per hour. Their mass is often around 90 kilograms, so they generate a huge amount of momentum. Now in order to maximise performance and minimise air resistance, they will adopt a low crouch position in straights and jumps to minimise that frontal cross section. They'll wear teardrop shaped helmets and have fins on their gloves around their, and around their boots which create a more streamlined shape. And they also wear super silky lycra suits. So you can have a look on the BBC website and have a look at winter sports and you'll see that there's a, there's a web page on there all about downhill skiing and, and the, the strategies they have to minimise air resistance. We also have track cycling. So the, the lightweight carbon fibre bicycle design with aerodynamic features, for example, disc wheels, you would see their wheels are blocked out to, to minimise any air flow in between the wheels. Um, and aerodynamic forks, they will reduce energy expenditure and they minimise the air resistance. The riding position, so like I've discussed before, the shoulders forward, the high seat position to tilt the body forward, the narrow handlebars to reduce that cross-sectional area. The helmets, the tear-shaped helmets to, to streamline airflow, tight-fitting lycra skin suits, smooth socks pulled over the shoes, so even things like the laces don't create air resistance. And then they shave their legs, their face, their hands, everything to maximise a smooth surface. It's all about marginal gains in track cycling. And again, there's a, there's a YouTube video you can watch which demonstrates everything we've just talked through. So what I would like you to do as a task at the end of this first video is I would like you to write 500 words considering swimming and drag in the water. I would like you to think of um, the different swimming strokes there are and the manipulation of the body position in the water. I would like you to consider the clothing that they wear and the velocities they reach in the water. Um, I would like you to have a look into the Speedo LZR suit and any newer alternatives. Um, and I would also like you to consider what role the technology plays in sport and, and official regulations to ensure that all swimmers have an, a level playing field. So if you could do that and then either post it on the Microsoft Teams page or email it to me to check over, that would be really good. Well done, that's video one completed. Um, you can move on to video two once you have completed your homework task.